Hi, welcome to This Week in Data, your guide to the modern data culture, brought to you by Pragmatic Works. My name is Devin Knight. And I'm Adam Jorgensen. And in today's episode, we're going to look at why are so many people flocking to SQL Server. Mm. But uh, before we do that, as always, we've got some news. OK, great. Uh, so the first thing I have for you, Devin, is MIT. Okay. A lot of smart people at MIT. Yes. They have built an AI that can predict what will happen next from a still image. So a picture of like a train or a person, and the AI can predict um, what will happen next. The train and the person are not in the same picture. Anyone could predict what, that, what would happen if that was the case. Right. But they used footage from The Office, the TV show, okay. to kind of predict, is, are they going to have a handshake? Are they going to high five? Are they going to take a stapler, you know. Jello, that yes. kind of thing. Yes, yeah, what's going to happen next? It feels like a game or something like you would do, like you put it on like a game on your TV and say, oh, what do you think is going to happen next? Yeah. Like, the AI can do it, huh? And yeah. How, did it say how accurate it was? Um, it didn't, uh, but they said what they're doing is they're taking two models and they're training them against each other okay. using, you know, hundreds of thousands of hours of, of raw video footage from right. YouTube and Flickr and, huh. um, you know, backlog. And, oh, so, so not just office material. It's not just everything. the office. But for the human behavior side, they were using office. Uh, I'm not sure why the office is the definition of human, normal human behavior. Yeah, because my, my boss is just like Michael Scott. Well, right. <laughs> and everyone is like Dwight. You're right, exactly. Right? Exactly. So, um, so that, that's pretty interesting. I think they're, they're looking for you know, commercial applications for things like you know, in-home robots yeah. to help them understand, you know, based on what you're doing, what are you going to do next so they stay away yeah, and you know, that type of thing. I think it'll be, be interesting. So we talked about Microsoft Teams, uh -huh. their Slack, oh, yes, before, kind of yeah. Slack competitor. Right? Right. Um, they have a little bit of a challenge with Teams. We're not having this challenge, but a lot of companies are. It's not loading on a lot of the corporate networks. Really? Which is a bit of a problem wow. if and, you want to use it. And just a quick reminder, for, for if, you, if someone hadn't seen the previous episode where we talked about Teams. Te what is Teams real quick? Uh, so Teams is basically a chat collaboration. Uh, it's, it's a product from Microsoft that's designed to compete with Slack, which okay. is a you know, team communication collaboration tool. Right. Uh, but it's free with your, with your Office 365 subscription, and it includes you know, it integrates things like your calendar and your files and does some, does some things that Slack doesn't do and vice versa. Yeah. So um, we've, we've started piloting it. We moved from Slack over to Teams. It's worked pretty well for us. Mm -hmm. But as I was researching news, I saw a lot of articles, a lot of posts, a lot of people having trouble getting it to work on their really? corporate networks. Oh, geez. But there's a pretty simple reason why uh -huh. a lot of the code that's in Teams is built from the consumer version of Skype. Mm. Not bad. Doesn't mean it's bad in terms of a product, mm -hmm. but a lot of corporate networks have blocked Block Skype, right? Skype, yeah, right? Yeah. I would be like saying, oh, it's built on Facebook. Well, a lot of corporate, <laughs> you know, a lot of corporate networks block Facebook Messenger, for example, sure. right? So I think that you know Microsoft published a fix. It's basically unblock it. <laughs> it's it's not a very complicated fix. Um, but I think uh, it seems like something that could have been thought through a little bit better. Yeah, you would think that they would have done some testing with some customers. Like, that, does this work? Right. Can you open it? <laughs> with some of your major Office 365 customers, yeah. that would be yeah, a, good, a good thing to test. That's you know, interesting, though. Maybe outside the building. Yeah. Think outside the campus there in, in, uh, in Redmond. Um, last but not least, we've talked a lot about what Microsoft is doing in the Linux community, yeah, right? Yeah. So we have SQL Server that's going to run on Linux now. Yeah. We have what does run on Linux now. And we have a lot of open source investment from Microsoft around developers and new platforms, Visual yeah. Studio. Not everybody is super excited about this. And, uh, you know, I kind of get where they're coming from, but I, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I think they're wrong. So, okay. But there's a lot of folks in the Linux world that are saying Microsoft's tactic is come in and embrace something, say, oh, we're, we're all in. Yeah. And then extend it, make it better, say, oh, you can, you can run Linux with this Microsoft thing, and look how much better they are together. Mm -hmm. And then essentially just pull the market share, right? Use Microsoft Center of Gravity, and they call it em embrace, extend, and extinguish, ultimately, right? Uh, I mean, I, could, I get it. I you can, you can see it, but right? But there's definitely a big, and I think this is what you're going to get to, there's been a big culture change with Microsoft as far as how yeah, it Yeah, yeah, there has. And so a lot of the industry view is more platforms mean more profits, right? right? I mean, at the end of the day, We've got uh, the world's largest software maker who wants to build platforms and solutions across open source operating systems, development tools, platforms, yeah. and their own, and make them all work together. Right. Um, you know, the other article that was right next to this said, um, "Open source won and Microsoft surrendered," <laughs> and that was the title of the article. And I thought it was from Computer World, and I thought it was a pretty good title, right? I mean, yeah. that's basically. 
you know, they said this is not the Bill Gates and Balmer Microsoft. Right. You know, it's a little different approach. And so I think, you know, hopefully if they can continue with the investment, everybody will come around and see it as a good I thing. I think so. I mean, there's been just seeing the culture change in Microsoft over the last, since Satyam became a CEO, it's, it's huge. A big, big, big difference. So I think you'll continue to see that through things like the Linux integration and stuff like that. So, yeah. So that's all we have for the news. Okay. So we can move on to our main topic, which is why are so many companies flocking to SQL Server. Uh -huh. We're seeing a lot of companies just, you know, I want to leave Oracle, I want to leave MySQL, I want to leave Sybase. Yeah. And it's been kind of interesting. Yeah, so well, let me ask the question, why are so many companies leaving and going to Microsoft? Or well, SQL Server, I, should say? Yeah, I mean, you know, Joe, we've been doing this a while. We're old grizzled veterans. <laughs> yes. Uh, at least I feel like that most, <laughs> most Mondays. Um, you have too many war wounds. As well. have, I do. <laughs> I do. Um, have you used any of those other platforms? I have. Uh, Question answered. Yes. Yes. There. Period. There we go. Yes. So I have. So for example, I have. Uh, I have a WordPress blog, <clears throat> and yep. WordPress typically runs on MySQL. And there's a lot of big, major corporate applications that are using MySQL because it's a pretty developer-friendly, right. open-source kind of product, right? MySQL has a lot of security issues, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of the least secure databases. I think I just told everybody to go hack my blog, but other than that, <laughs> um, you're not going to get anything good. Um, you also have you know, Oracle, you have Sybase. Sybase hasn't seen any real innovation in that platform in yeah. forever, so we see it a lot in financial services and kind of that don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it right. type of industry. <laughs> and then from the Oracle side, customers are tired of paying for every little bit and switch that they want to flip on. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've... get nickel and dimed with Oracle. Yeah, they get, they get $100,000 and $500,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it, it hurts. You know, you want to turn on a, you know, add a, install the, the BI capabilities, right? Okay, there's hundred grand. Yeah. Right? I, mean, it's, I mean, that hurts, right? I mean, right. For, and for a long time, there were small niche segments of the population where Oracle might have been a better fit. Certain performance, certain mission critical things, those don't exist anymore. No, that's years. They years are in the past. far gone, right. um, and so you know it, they're, they want a more secure environment. They they're tired of the ad hoc pricing, and you know they really like the everything in one package. So those are interesting. So can you tell me give me a few other ways that SQL Server is specifically better? And you've kind of you've talked generally about security and things like that, but specifically how is SQL Server better than these others? Sure. So there's a few big ones, right? So performance, um, you know, and everybody has their own benchmarks, right? But I can right. tell you from our experience in working with customers, um, SQL Server's never lost the benchmark with Pragmatic Works. And sometimes that's you know on an SMP box, sometimes it's on an APS and right. scale out, sometimes it's in the cloud. Um, but when configured correctly. Uh, SQL Server has the technology to outperform. That's yeah. pretty, pretty, uh, pretty clear. It is the most secure database, which is super important. And they yeah. judge that based on a couple of things: the the number of uh, essentially breaches that are backed by SQL Server, and the number of security uh, holes and patches that are found mm -hmm. over the course of a year. And really, if you look at you know the chart that they always put out every year, you know SQL Server had this many, you know this many Oracle had. You know, this many, right. MySQL had this many, and so on and so forth. So we need that security. We need that most secure database. Yeah. It's built for the cloud and the data center. So we've That's seen huge. things like Stretch and being able to use the same platform in the cloud and on-premise and together in a hybrid scenario. That's what customers want. They want to be able to ease forward, move their strategy forward without saying, we're all in here or all in here. Right? I think it's interesting, too, that they're coming much more agile with their development. So SQL Server mm -hmm. is going to have much more frequent release cycles, right. a lot more updates, bigger things, bigger feature uh, updates that come uh, for each release more often. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're talking about migration. So let's say that I am on one of these other systems. I'm on Oracle or whatever, SAP or Sybase, and I want to move to SQL Server. How are people doing it? What, what's the process for it? Well, you know, it's interesting. So the other, it all depends on why you're moving. Mm -hmm. You know, so typically we start, and we would work with the customer and kind of assess their environment, look at their priority. Are they moving for performance? Are they trying to get analytics benefits with something like our server? Are they trying to move their BI environment from Oracle or MicroStrategy or Cog uh, Cognos over to you know, a SQL Server stack? What are they moving? Right. And typically what we want to try to do is get them functional in that new SQL Server world you know, very quickly. So we start with a finite solution, measure the success, show the ROI, help them really kind of champion their own process, mm -hmm. right? And then expand and move those applications as a stack. So if it's a, you know, data warehouse, BI implementation, there's a certain stack to that. If right. it's a, you know, uh, .NET or Java app, there's a certain stack to that. Uh, and we want to be able to move that in a way that's not, you know, where we're not saying, okay, the database is up, 
<laughs> it's going to be another couple months and then the application <laughs> will work. You know, we've got to be able to get the users working and get right. them moving. And the nice thing about SQL Server is it has a lot of features and capabilities to enable us to do that quickly. So we can leverage the cloud as an option to scale development and deployment. We can parallelize and do some of those things. So, um, you know, people are really exploring how to get there, but they're moving there faster than we've seen in a long time. So from, from our experience, we're, we're doing a lot of these type of engagements at Pragmatic Works. From, from our experience, what are some of the improvements that customers are actually seeing once they've uh, moved over to SQL Server as a platform? You know, there, there's a lot of them, but I think the biggest ones would probably be better developer performance, or better developer experience. Obviously, system performance, we could come back to that. Yeah. But their cost goes down, right? I mean, it's not very often when, you know, you get all of these things in one package, performance is better, developer experience is better, we can go to the cloud, we can stay on-prem. By the way, it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, that's always a good yeah. bottom line right. winner there. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's a pretty good one. But I think the last, the most important one is actually the fact that they get immediate access to all the new capabilities. Mm. So they may move their data warehouse over to SQL Server from right. Oracle, for example. But day one, when that server gets turned on, they have our server. Yeah. So they can start doing analytics on that same box. They can make the use of the hardware that they're investing in. So they can do a lot more um, with what they're investing in as opposed to having to spread it out over different platforms. And Microsoft has had different programs as well. You may be able to remember if they still have some of these going on, but programs for migrating from one service to another. Do you know happen at all? Stuff? You know, do they still have any of those? They do, yeah. There's a lot of opportunity to get you know, different kinds of funding or investment or advice, guidance, advisory services, those kinds of things from Microsoft and Microsoft Partners, which of course we are one, um, in regards to modernizing your entire data platform, which right. might mean upgrading or migrating, it might mean going to the cloud, it could mean any number of things depending upon what you're really trying to accomplish. Well, that's fantastic. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, discussion today talking about migrating or why people are flocking to SQL Server really. Yeah. Uh, it, comment back to us. Let us know, are, are you on another system and considering migrating to SQL Server? What are some of the things that you're thinking about for that migration progress? Let us know. And also subscribe to our blog. If you go to blog.pragmaticworks.com, you can subscribe and hear more about not only This Week in Data, but some yep. of the other things that we're doing as well. Uh, thanks for joining us this week. We'll look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks, everybody.